Cordoba became the most important Jewish center in Europe during the Umayyad Caliphate that ruled Spain from 711 until 1031. And today, in the streets of Cordoba, you can still get glimpses of that bygone past. Tens of thousands of tourists come to Cordoba each year to explore this history, and many come for its unique Jewish heritage. Cordoba had a large Jewish population with a distinctive Jewish quarter, and today you can still explore the narrow walkways of the quarter, not unlike the way they were. And you might be able to enjoy the patio of a family home with Andalusian hospitality. One of the most important Jews of that time was Hasdai ben Itzak ibn Chaprut. He was born into a prosperous Jewish family, and he was educated in Hebrew and Arabic, and became the prime minister of the realm. The richness of the Umayyad Caliphate can be seen in the great mosque of Cordoba, which was built during that time, one of the largest in the Muslim world, and today it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Norman Stillman says, the Jewish scholars of this period started the golden age for Jews in Spain, and they have enriched the Jewish learning until the present day. The other outstanding figure from Cordoba was Moses ben Maimon, known as Maimonides. An old Jewish folk saying is, from Moses to Moses, there's none like Moses. Maimonides was born in Cordoba in 1135 and was the most important Jewish philosopher of the Middle Ages and one of the most important of all time. Writing in Hebrew and Arabic, he has left his imprint on both traditions. The memory of Maimonides is constantly felt in Cordoba, from his statue that we see here, to this plaza with the tower of the great mosque in the background, where someone has borrowed his name for a local business. The Jewish quarter was large and had several thousand residents, and it would have had many synagogues. This design for a synagogue shows what one might have looked like. The only surviving synagogue is a small one located in the heart of the old Jewish quarter in the Calle de los Judíos, Street of the Jews. It was built in the early 1300s, well after Hasdai and Maimonides lived there. From the ark in the eastern wall to the women's balcony that faces the ark, we can see the exquisite decorative floral designs in the Mudéjar style plasterwork. The small size of this building suggests it might have been the synagogue of a wealthy family. The Hebrew inscription on the wall tells about building the synagogue, and it says, A small temple and dwelling built by Itzhak Moab, son of the master Ephraim, in the year 75, so God will pay heed and quickly rebuild Jerusalem. It was built in 13. 15 on the Western calendar. The practice of having a family synagogue like this one was not uncommon in the Sephardic world, especially for wealthy families. The Museum of Jewish Life in Cordoba is Casa de Sefarad. Its exhibits range from the elegant collection about the wedding, including this traditional Sephardic wedding dress, embroidered in gold thread and used today by Jewish brides in Morocco. A beautifully decorated ketubah or marriage contract. And then there are the accessories of those who dressed richly from belts to shoes and bags. Books and learning were important and Cordoba was the leading center for Talmudic studies in Europe. 
and it had the best libraries. Casa de Seferad has a beautiful collection of ritual objects from groggers to Megillah scrolls, a traditional Sephardic oil-based Hanukkiah, and another, and another. After Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492, some Jews stayed in hiding and were arrested by the Inquisition. This San Benito was an Inquisition cape which convicted Judaizers were forced to wear as a sign of shame. This particular San Benito was for Gonzalo El Rubio, convicted of Judaizing in 1510. Today, Cordoba does not have a Jewish community, but its history lives on for the tens of thousands of tourists who come each year to explore the heritage of Jewish life that once flourished here.